Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about a mortgage backed security that was created back in 2007 before the crash. Interesting thing to note is that this is for some really big money. I mean, look how big these chunks are. And we see that they rated AAA by Moody and all of these guys. You know, this is what caused the financial recession. These things had triple A um, graded like rating, and yet they all blew up. I mean, if we even just look here, we go to Moody's website. I was looking at it over here. This is 23rd of September, so this is recently. They've downgraded this blue granite investment number four to, I think, it's like a class C. Uh, you know, they've really downgraded it to you know, these like B status. It's They've basically realized that the key assumptions they made was all wrong and that these guys basically stuffed up. So, hold on, where are we? Here we go, back to the little, the actual document. So, I went through this document. It was interesting because this was something that got triple A status. It is one of those things that caused the world recession, mortgage-backed securities. Um, I went through the document. These are the various tranches that you have. Um, issued by Standard Bank, who's the arranger and dealer. And look, you, you have to have like a little legal tea because this was a monster of a document. So they create... What they do is, so it's issued by Standard Bank, but they create a separate company called Blue Granite. So if this the whole thing tanks, Standard Bank is protected. They create special purpose vehicles to be bankrupt remote. Now, as you can see, there's quite a, it's quite a heavy document. I mean, uh, this, is, this is them trying to explain it in a little diagram. You can see very complicated how everything goes around. Essentially, what they're doing is they're taking home loans, they're chopping up the home loans, they're, and they're splitting it through some financial engineering to make new securities. Um, if you want like a better or more detailed explanation of that, I did write that little textbook uh, that goes through it quite you know, thoroughly and explains everything. This is just interesting to see. Look at all the different program, uh, sorry, all the different parties that are needed in this deal. I mean, quite a lot of parties. This is what I love. Look at all the various documents they need. Uh, program memorandum, the trust deed, trust deed of this, memorandum of articles, blah, 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 blah. You can see it goes on. There's like 34 documents for this thing. I mean, derivative contracts, custodian agreements. I mean, this is the boring, boring side of finance is doing all this paperwork. Uh, and they talk about the issuers. This is interesting. So you see, they, they're like, oh, we've got these auditors. I'll show you the audit report at the end. It's quite a joke. Um, then they've got this. Okay. Then they gave Standard Bank's financial earnings. Like, oh, look how great we are. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then they give all this type of stuff. This was important. Uh, they talk about the home loan pool. Um, funnily enough, with historical data, they tell us that 78% of these people are not self-employed. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't actually care about that stat. I care about how many of these people are unemployed. Um, how many are unemployed? Why are you telling me 78% are not self-employed? And how can you be self-employed? Employed means you work for someone. So that's like a bit of a, an oxymoron there. Why don't you say these people are sole traders or have their own businesses? Self-employed does sound quite weird. Anyway... Um, they speak about eligibility criteria. Yeah, oh, that's all important. Blah 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 blah. They give all of this boring, boring documents here. They talk about their cash management. Yeah, oh, that was also quite boring. Da 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 da. Um, this was interesting. Like the size of the loans, you can check how big. I mean, this is not for your average everyday investor. This is for institutional investors who've got access to pension funds to purchase these these things. Uh, that was also all boring, boring, revolving period, guaranteed home loans. Oh, what I thought was quite great, um, I didn't know where, where we, we saw it, but Standard Bank, they say they set up their own, their own people valued the houses and they get to set the, the interest rate. So they're controlling quite a lot of uh, components in this deal. They can say, oh no, this house is actually worth 10 million. And I mean, one of the things with property is that it is a subjective, uh, well, there is you know room for subjectivity when it comes to the valuation. So for them to do the 
the valuing of the housing I thought was quite dodgy. Also the fact that they set the interest rate and they can, it's variable. So every month they can fluctuate these interest rates on these poor homeowners. So I didn't think that was too cool. Um, just trying to think where I read that. You can see it was a big long document. Originally I made a video where I actually went through the whole thing. But that was 39 minutes long. And I don't think anybody's going to want to watch that. Because you know YouTube it's all about 10 second cat videos. Um, I wanted to show you. Hold on. Let's get to the actual details. Which I thought were quite funny. Uh, this is where they're talking about Iceland and Ireland and Euros. And I'm like this is a South African instrument. Anyway this is all boring stuff. Do, 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 do. I want to show you right at the end some of the interesting stuff. Um, okay, okay, there we go. Yeah, so this was how the, the asset pool stratification, you know, how the assets have been split up. It was interesting that the largest chunk was for loans between 500,000 and 750. I mean, yeah, the, the houses that you can buy with that in South Africa, it's quite interesting. That target market that they've gone for. I thought this was a big, big red flag. That majority of these loans are for 95 to 100% value of the loan. Just as well, they didn't give anybody over 100%. I mean, that would have been really dumb. But again, the loan to value, uh, Standard Bank are issuing the loan and they're saying what the value of the house is. You know, they can say, okay, here's a million, buy the house. Okay, next week, oh, now the house is actually worth two million now. You know, and then they can. So, already these numbers, I can't trust them too much, but already at 95%. That's how much of the loan you're giving at 34. They don't do that anymore. After the re remember, this is a contract before the recession. This was before everything went haywire. They will not give such a high loan to value anymore because this caused big problems. Also interesting to see is that these loans do make up a big chunk of the people's incomes. So that was also quite concerning as well. Uh, the interest rates. I mean, they were some of them were quite high, but um, borrowers' income. I mean, yeah, this is interesting. They, I mean, it's the majority of these loans are going to to poor people, and I think you know they're getting hit with heavy interest rates. It's making up a big chunk of their their repayment, so they're very much dependent on these loans. And the fact that Standard Bank can just change the interest rate at any time that they want can really mess with the budgeting of these people. But this is what I loved. I love chat, borrower's age. Okay, they've got everybody's different age, group and everything. And then look, 200 people, they don't know what their age is. 200, they gave, they gave loans with 100, almost 100, what, you know, 150 million dollars, uh, sorry, rands, 150 million rand to people whose age they don't even know. Which means these people didn't even show an ID document because on your ID document you can use the first six uh, digits to work out somebody's age. So, what on earth were they doing? Like, unspecified. How can you not know your borrower's age? How can you give them a whole credit score and do all these eligibility criteria and this whole underwriting process that they speak about in their document and then for 200 people they don't even know how old the person is. That I thought was crazy. Okay, But it gets even worse. Uh, the geographical distribution, most of it is in Gauteng. Then another little big chunk is in the Western Cape, best, best province in the world. Love the Western Cape. But yeah, I love this. So now what are people using the loans for? So most of them are using it as their main residence. But <laughs> 105 of them, they don't know. They don't know what the people are going to use the money for. Unspecified. What, what does that mean? So what's this telling us? This is telling us that only what we've learned from this document is only 78% of these people are not self-employed, whatever that means. So that means what the other 20, I don't know. They're just, that's a dodgy stat. Two of a hundred of them, they don't even know who they are. And then of those, maybe half of them, they don't even know what they're going to use the money for. How is this possible? Oh my gosh, this is insane. How, there's, how can they even have an unspecified column where people don't even know what the amount is for? They should have just said other. Why couldn't they just say other? 
<laughs> but yeah, that is absolutely crazy. They're giving 200 loans to people who they don't even know how old they are. They could be teenagers for all they know, and they could be spending it on PlayStations. I mean, this is, this is a big red flag. And this got a triple A rating. This got a triple A rating. Anyway, I wanted to show you the one, one final part with the, the auditor's report. Uh, yeah, so this is the auditor's report. Okay. I like this. Our review revealed nothing, which caused us to believe that the issuer will not be in compliance with the relevant provisions, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So you read the findings and you're like, oh, okay, so everything seems to be in order. But you read their scope. Our review was generally limited, limited to an examination of just the program memorandum and the transaction supplement. Okay. It should be recognized listen to this, it should be recognized that our review did not constitute an audit and may not necessarily have revealed all material facts. Yes, because if you had done an audit, you would have asked, who are these 200 people who we don't know and who are these 100 loans where we don't even know where the money's going? I mean, come on, seriously, what? Oh, this is <laughs> but this is hidden in how many pages of documents a 69-page document with the most boring English ever. So unless you actually have got time to read through and question everything, I mean, come on, come on. This is, is this like a joke? But anyway, that is, that, that's this whole blue granite thing. This was a mortgage-backed security instrument before the crash. And I mean, just reading that document, you have to ask yourself questions. How did this get triple A rating to begin with? And why is Moody only downgrading it now? I mean, finance, sometimes you study the subject and it raises up way more questions than answers. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought of this video and thanks so much for watching. Cheers.